Emery Douglas is a former Minister of Culture for the Black Panthers, whose graphic art has become an iconic representation of the struggles of the party during the 60s and 70s. And in 2012 to 2014, uh, to celebrate the new Zapatista movement anniversary, he went to Chiapas to work with the Zapatista school and with local Zapatista artists to make art, share visions, bringing together revolutionary art traditions of the two communities. Thank you. to share with you uh, the experience that uh, I was a part of. Um, I, how it came about was uh, Caleb Duarte. Uh, a couple of years back, and uh, he was familiar with my work and asked if I would come to, uh, we, would be willing to come to uh, Chiapas to do an art and residency. And so once it worked out, I, I, I was able to, to go. And uh, what he wanted to do was, the, uh, he had uh, observed the Black Panther movement and the Zapatista movement. And he wanted to do through art, to show through the art, show how the aesthetics of both movements were inspiring to those movements and to people who were involved or who had seen those, observed those movements. And so it was through, those, through that he called, brought together uh, the young man to the right there who did the uh, poster called Zapatera Negra. It's half uh, Black Panther, half uh, Zapatista. Uh, and so it, it showed the connection there. Uh, the, there was the exhibit, which this was the exhibit, uh, part of the exhibit being installed with some of the images that were more, more recent images that I've done, which I will go in uh, following the discussion in relationship to the exhibit uh, display itself, uh, the Zapatero display itself. Uh, initially, when I came, they wanted to uh, have uh, something symbolically, a poster that would represent the, uh, the connection between the Zap Zapatistas and the Panthers. And they asked me for several slogans, asked me about slogans that we use in the Black Panther Party. And I saw them, I came with uh, all power to the people, uh, each one teach one. Uh, but then uh, I recall one that you used, you used, you used uh, I am we, and that was in a uh, small book of poems between him and Eric Huggins, uh, former Black Panther Party member. And so they thought that was one that connected uh, both uh, movements together, I am we. So that became the poster for the exhibit itself. Okay, here, here again, I, I hope I'm not uh, moving too bad. Here again is the uh, embroideries. There were seven uh, embroideries of my work that were done by the uh, Zapatista Mind Women Collectives uh, that were part of the exhibit as well, where they took the seven uh, images of mine, remixed them, and interpreted with the uh, Zapatista and Mayan symbols within the artwork. The embroideries took about, uh, I believe it took about uh, six, six months to do. We had to go to two different uh, uh, women's collectives for them to be done. Uh, uh, some of the work was hand embroidered, others parts of it had to be done by machine. So that's why I had to do two different uh, uh, two different collectives who were involved in the, doing the embroidery. I just this is just oh I just clicked huh? <laughs> Maybe somebody else needs to click. Other way. Okay, please. <laughs> Go the other way. Next one, please. Let me see. Is that, so, uh, uh, the, the first one. That's the first one? Yeah. yeah, so as you can see, this is, uh, I just several of them I um, had, had photographs of. They're on the exhibit right now at the Mission Culture Center and, uh, in San Francisco, and hopefully at some point we'll bring, we'll bring them here as part of the exhibit, uh, the exhibit themselves. We also have uh, a small Zapatero Zapatista dolls, uh, Black Panther Zapatero dolls, who are part of the uh, display as well. Next, as you can see, the symbolism and 
the artwork of uh, how they reinterpret it. Also, you have some art painters as well who are also Mayan, young Mayan artists who also uh, reinterpret some of the artwork I did as well. Next, please. Uh, this is the young lady in the middle. She, her family was one of the ones who uh, uh, did, the, uh, did the embroideries. Uh, uh, as you see, to, to your left is Caleb Duarte, who was the uh, owner and manager of uh, Idello Art Space in Chiapas in St. Christopher. Next, please. Uh, this is the location where, when we were, when, we, when I went to uh, the Carol Call, uh, Morella, the first time, where Caleb had set it up six months in advance, because these things have to be done in advance. You can't just go and you you start painting, but you have to get permission from, from the administrative government there in regards to whatever you're going to do. And so it was set up uh, six months in advance. So when we went there to uh, Morella, uh, we thought we were going to Morella to do the painting, but they sent us to a school about 15 to 20 minutes away from uh, there to uh, paint the school. So this is the building that they wanted us to paint. And we were there for three days. The first day, it rained. And we had to, at, up there on that platform is where we slept for all three days. We had to bring our, all, all, because he can't afford to paint. We had to bring the paint, we had to bring the sleeping bags, we had to bring everything that was needed to take care of the uh, responsibilities of the, uh, uh, doing the creative work that we were going to do. So at night, we were sleeping up there in sleeping bags, and uh, uh, bats would be flying over Zoom by us, and uh, <laughs> you turn on the computer to try to listen to some music or something, and the bugs would attack your computer, so you had to turn it off. But it was it was fun. It was fun, <laughs> and you had to go out down the hill to the outhouse at night that you chose to go. And so those, and we ate with everybody else. We went down the hill, and the young people there came and uh, were very curious at first. Then they started looking, and then some of them came in, and then they started participating. But we weren't allowed to take photographs of them there at all. So, but they came in and they participated uh, in the in the development of the, uh, of the of the building space. We had limited paint, so we had to figure out how we best we're going to make it look aesthetically good. And this other uh, next picture will show you what we had, what we did. So we just did the poles. Uh, painted around the poles, framed them, and did artwork within the frames and like that. And so what you see there is the work, the contribution of the collective of artists who we came together along with the students at the school themselves. And they came, they were indigenous students who come from various communities, uh, and they stay there, I think they go, they stay there for 15, 20 days or 30 days, then they go back to their communities and they work and then they come back again. And, and one of the uh, uh, artists, Mayan artists, who some teacher I work with is also a teacher. He's 18 years old, but he's also one of the teachers at the school there as well. Next, please. Here again, this is when I was uh, invited there at, uh, back in December. I was at the in November 2012, and then I went to get a tour of the uh, Sadeki. And I think it's like the school of the earth, the school of the dirt. And uh, amazing trade school, amazing, amazing, where young people who, who indigenous folks who never had any training uh, come there to get trained and they take it back to their communities, so even from, from uh, uh, gardening to hair, doing hair to uh, cooking to mechanics. Um, then they take these trades back to their communities uh, and share them with the community. And so I was asked to do a 20-minute uh, presentation at the uh, conference that they had on, on reflection and analysis, uh, where you had indigenous uh, communities from all over uh, South, all over uh, Latin America, South America, and the world were there. You had uh, people from uh, who came from Europe, who did on um, the environment. You had uh, from Puerto Rico who talked about political prisoners. So you had to, it was a whole dynamics of a, it was an amazing experience one of the one of the most amazing experiences I I had next please uh, this is uh, the recent trip where uh, Caleb had when I was there the first time had took me to the store the Patricia store uh, where they had uh, wanted to get it painted and so over oh it took us about a year or so to get it together and there was about fifteen of us as artists who came together. Uh, some from France, some from uh, Mexico, 
some from the U.S. and my, along with myself, and uh, some of the young Mayan artists who were Zapatista artists who were going to work with us. Unfortunately, because of the fact that they had to help with the middle school that was being planned, they weren't able to contribute. So we had to continue on with the project uh, ourselves. And uh, about five days it took us to uh, come together and deal with the, uh, the painting of the store. This is the before, the next one is the actual store itself. And they, they were to, um, uh, Keller had the idea of using the rays, of which I used a lot in some of the images I did, to give that feeling to the images of the artwork spreading out. Uh, as you see, you have, uh, and, it, and it, dealt, it, it deals with the four pillars of what they wanted to in, integrate into, what was production, cultural, uh, solidarity, and health. Those issues had to be reflected in some way in the art itself. Next, please. Those are Zapatista dials that you see here on the pillars that were part of the installation at the, uh, uh, on the, uh, of the itself. Next, please. This is one of the images that I contributed to it. They got kind of a call with the saying Salud, Education, Production, Cultural. Yeah. So that was one of the uh, images there. And now I think I'll be going into some of showing you uh, how the art itself that I have been doing recently, contributing is also really connected to resistance and uh, self-determination. Next please. Uh, first of all, I, want, I always want to show you this one because this is a historical image that we always, in the Black Panther Party, we want to show our solidarity with the uh, original caretakers of the land. And so this is uh, the indigenous uh, the Native Americans of the United States born to. So we always we did this uh, image, uh, really about 19, uh, 1967, 68, when I first put this together. This is uh, more of a design than the actual original art that I did but taking art from different places, two elements, and putting it together and uh, uh, showing our solidarity. Because we were always in solidarity with the, uh, with the uh, 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 with Ang, American Indian movement. Uh, we also with the uh, uh, E.Y. Kuhn, Greg Garbush, the Asian American movement, uh, the uh, Young Lords, the Puerto Ricans uh, movement, uh, all of those, the Brown Berets, all of those were out in solidarity together. Next, please. This is, this again says, get out of, this is another earlier one, it says get out of the ghetto, get out of Africa, get out of Asia, get out of Latin America, U.S. imperialists. <laughs> Next thing. This one says, our fight is not in Vietnam, free the GIs. And then when we talk talking about it, our fight was not in Vietnam, the Vietnamese wasn't the cause of unemployment, it wasn't the cause of inferior education, it wasn't the cause of indecent housing. They weren't missing us, they weren't beating us, they weren't brutalizing. So our fight is not in Vietnam. Next, please. Here that same paper shows when you had these young men called La Sieta de la Raza, La the name of the paper. They were charged with the killing of a San Francisco policeman, but they couldn't afford to talk about their case. They had no money, so we were able to get them a lawyer, but at the same time, we were able to share our paper with them for about five or six issues of the Black Panther newspaper, where they were able to, to uh, educate people about the history of behind the setup and the framework that they were being charged with for the killing of the San Francisco policemen. Uh, eventually, they were exonerated and found not guilty of the charges. Next, please. This one is called Blue's Eye. Uh, that was based on Tony Morrison's book, Blue's Eye. Uh, about a young woman who went through life who thought she wasn't going to be a beautiful person. Uh, and uh, she was uh, traumatized, abused, bitten. Uh, uh, all kinds of way of abuse, psychological abuse. So what Toni Morrison said at the end of the book, I remember, was that the she, you, know, you could be psychologically assassinated without being shot by a bullet. In essence, what she said. So I was trying that kept sticking in my mind. So that's what I tried to interpret in this in this image. And not only if, if through, through for that particular Lewis Eye the publication, but you, in a way it transcends that in, in many ways. Next, please. Here again is uh, Greg Moore Zoom, an Asian American, had a, did an uh, uh, exhibit on reparations, and he asked me to be a part of it. And so I, this image and the next image was a part of that exhibit on Japanese Americans who were fighting, struggling for reparations, who, who had some had gotten it, and uh, the African American community who had been continued demand for reparations in this country. 
Here again is one uh, I did called Reparations and Using Words Like Figures. We do change red, white, and blue. And you see that connecting M symbol at the bottom is an is a, is a, uh, African Dugan symbol from West Africa. And it meant, says, you are a slave of who, him whose handcuffs you wear. So that's uh, dealing with the reparations. Next, please. This is the Black Panther Party, October 1966, 1982. And you see it inside of it, uh, the different social programs that we had. And matter of fact, in uh, Winston-Salem, you see that ambulance in there. We had, a, that was the first chapter of the, in the South of the Black Panther Party was in Winston-Salem. Uh, they had an ambulance service in Winston-Salem because the ambulance would not come into the community. So what happened, they went and got certified as ambulance, as ambulance drivers, and the community bought them an ambulance. And so that served the community back in the day. We had the free busing programs all across the country, for free food giveaways, uh, free breakfast for school kids programs, all these things, as you can see. Uh, uh, next, please. Peace Hills, War Kills. Next, please. Here again, it was the product of war and landmines, the whole bit. This one, New World Order, same old order. Man made money, money drove man mad. Here you got the UN, and, and the UN in some cases is not, is, is, has take sides, it's not uh, always a, a, uh, an objective situation there. And this is what you see, the man made money, you got the World Bank, you got, I think you got a company from here called Z, Blackwater, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> International Monetary Fund, you got all that in there. And you got the G20, you got the US government, you got the Zionist government state of Israel, you got all that in there, you got drones. Man made money, money drove man mad. That's the three M's. Next thing. Here's when the election came up. Here the election came up, you have uh, the jackass, the donkey for sale, corporate on. You got the elephant, soul, corporate on. And they both eating out the same trough. And they both spent over millions, billions of dollars. That's not, you know, I don't think the uh, American people can, that's not no 40, $25 donations each one. American people. <laughs> Next, please. This is Guantanamo, Commander in Chief. He has, he can stop that anytime. This is, this is the kill list. This is when Obama and 100 people get together every week and they decide on who they're going to assassinate or murder and kill in the world. And they make those decisions. So that made him a Nobel fraud. <laughs> this is a, a drone warfare. Intended collateral damage. I was contemplating the word peace at one time, and I said peace. And I was trying to figure out what can I do with the word peace. And I said peace is being attacked. And the word peace is being attacked. So this is what you see. Peace is being attacked. Here's peace being bloody. Private military contractors. Million dollars, are you going to the internet? All you see is thousands, thousands of them, private military contractors. Burger King is a private military contractor. They serve over there, and uh, they got Burger King over there in those locations. They got <laughs> over there in those locations. Next, please. Here, here you're talking about uh, fracking. You're talking about the pipeline. You're talking about nuclear war. This is what you, this is what we're, how dynamics is going on today. This is fact, so when you look at it, some people may not like it, but it's based on fact. Next please. Arab Muslim Islam, U.S. government, coded word for terrorist hate discrimination. Next, black male, U.S. government, coded word for hate discrimination. Next. This is a, a collaboration that I did with Aboriginal artists in uh, Richard Bell in uh, uh, Australia. I've been there three times. Uh, did several collaborations with Richard Bell.
This is what we did at Campbelltown Art Center outside of Sydney. Uh, also had one in 2008 at the Biennale at, on the island called Cockatoo Island, on the top of that island, uh, where what they, when they built, that used to be a shipyard, but before then, it was a prison. And the prison was built by the Irish, and then they locked the Irish up in the prison. Next, please. This symbol is called a twist symbol. It's from uh, New Zealand. It's when I did a collaboration with the Maori artist there last year. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, so I took the, that symbol and I used the flag and combined combine them together for the, uh, for the design that I uh, contributed to the overall mural. And uh, it's a symbol that symbolizes that it's a single twist that you may go in different paths and different ways, but you'll always be coming back together. And so that's what it represents. So when you, this is, a, you, well, next one you'll see that this is my design on that, based on that. Next, please. I see overcoming oppression is our path to unity. And in uh, Maori, that's what that represents, those words right there. So I took that symbol, redesigned it, remixed it with the Maori flag inside of the twist symbol concept. Boy Catalytics, uh, one day in our office in, 19, in the early 1970s, Cesar Chavez and farm workers were marching uh, down International Way, which was called into East 14th Street back then. And they were going to Sacramento to protest against the pesticides and chemicals that were on the, uh, being sprayed on the uh, lettuce that were found on the farm workers who were in the fields. And so we heard them, we went out, and there was Cesar Chavez with the farm workers in the week asking them what was going on, and they explained it to us, and uh, they said they were hungry. So we had our school about 15, 20 blocks away, and we worked it out where we could take them and feed them lunch so they could continue on the way. And so we marched with them from our headquarters to the school, and they ate lunch, and we wanted to show our solidarity with the movement. So I then came back and designed this paper. This next issue of the paper was in solidarity with the boycott. Next, please. Here are uh, some of my images that were contributed, uh, recreated by OSPA, Organizations for Solidarity with People from Asia, Africa, and Latin America, Tricontinental Posters, and Cuba. The Cuban artist used to remix and redesign some of my images and resend them out into the world. So this is where they took two of my images, remixed them, redesigned them, made them into this beautiful poster. Next, please. Here again is another one of the images uh, that I did was of just the black and white artwork that they took it and redesigned it and sent it out and mixed it into a poster as well and in four languages. <laughs> <laughs> in four languages, solidarity with the African American people, August 18, 1968. Next, please. This says, I wonder if Nixon is bugging us now. And the next one says, I wonder if Obama is fine with us now. <laughs> so 19, 40 years, 50 years later. Next, please. Uh, we were inspired by Malcolm X, the warrior. Next, please. This is dealing with the immigration. So I had the opportunity to go to Culture Strike. Uh, uh, Fabiana Rodriguez, artist, invited me and 50 other artists and writers and stuff to come to Phoenix, Arizona and to get some deeper insight into the immigration issues and what was going on. And we stayed there for four days and we went across the border and we talked to folks on the other side of, uh, of the border in regards to those who were helping, people who were trying to come here to us, and how some of them were getting uh, brutalized and, and, and uh, uh, hurt by in the journey, and so they're being, uh, being helped in one place with medical care and what have you. Then there was another location where they went where uh, they were trying to encourage them not to go, but some of them refused to go because it was, they felt it was just too close, and a lot of those were the ones who perished into the uh, to get on the way and didn't make it. And then we went to the courthouse the next day and we sit in the courtroom and they called Fast Track where they got 75 individuals, young individuals, chained to the wrists, to the waist, to the ankles. They come up to the judge and in 45 minutes, 75 individuals are found, not get found guilty. If you plead not guilty, which one of them did plead not guilty, uh, we were going to the chamber and after that, and asked the judge what was going to happen to one who pleaded not guilty. We'll say he's not going to get out, he's going to get more time. He's going to go for jail longer. So we asked, well, what do you send him when you send him to prison? You send him to private prison. So that means it's about money. 
it's, it's about money. And, and, and that's why you, when you talk about ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, that's a government agency where the politicians come together and then form these uh, decisions and policies, how they're going to frame them and, 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 uh, and present them to the public to divide the misinformation and create the hatred for people and individuals or what have you. But you got the uh, Corrections Corporation of America, that's the U.S. largest prison operation. That's all about money. Then you got the uh, ICE, Immigration and Customs Exchange uh, 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 Enforcement. Then you got GEO, which is the second. Then was the second U.S. private prison operators. Then I call it Toxic Waste Company. We're talking about Senate Bill 70. The Senate Bill, uh, well, I mean, Senate Bill 1070 was the bill where they were taking all the rights away, where if you were an immigrant or considered to be illegal, you could not go to school, could not get a job, could not work, could not do any of these things. So, and this, and this just shows that how that was beginning to spread. Cracks was coming in and spreading around other parts of the, leaking out to other parts of the, to the world. So that's why it's called toxic waste. Next please. Free the land by any means necessary. Next please. Health as well. I like the saying, yeah, it's not toxic. <laughs> This is uh, Haiti. This is um, an image I did that they used for the Haiti uh, solidarity paper. Uh, this is one I did when they had the, uh, the, they had the UN soldiers who urinated in the, in the water that they drank and used over in Haiti. And they got the cholera epidemic. And you had over 6 to 8,000 people who died from that epidemic. And the uh, UN is not living up to his responsibility by acknowledging or even wanting to help compensate the Haitian people for that epidemic. Mama said HIV AIDS is an act of genocide in Africa and it's an epidemic in our community. Next please. Mother's love. Next please. Papa's love. Next please. Here you have in the world you got young people gang banging, a percentage of them. All they, they're looking at each other, all they're doing is looking at each other with bullets, and looking at each other, pointing each other with bullets, and chains on the brain is about mental bondage. And the police don't care. They don't care. They say, let them kill each other. We don't care. The only time they care if it's out, kind of an outrage, then they'll try to put on a show to give you the illusion that they care, but they don't care. Next please. They're becoming an endangered species. You don't realize it. Here you get these youngsters going into the institutions and prisons and don't realize they're getting into modern day slavery. They don't realize until they get into it that what they're getting into is modern day slavery. Next please. Mamiya, a uh, with your mom, called Freedom, Black Panthers, Free the Angola Three, Three Panthers who were incarcerated, one that passed away. Next please. This is, uh, this is Oscar Brandt, a young man who was shot point blank two years ago on the, on the podium in uh, Oakland. And it says, uh, much as things change, some things change the same. Why did they get to brutalize and kill us and we get to blame? Next, please. This is about justice. Next, please. Free political prisoners, all power to the people. Next, please. Thank you. Thank you.